All right, so today we're going to focus on how to best use Webfire 4, uh, about four zillion questions that you guys sent in. Okay, somebody said they still can't see the screen. You should see a PowerPoint that says how to use Webfire um, 4. Okay, she got it. Okay, good. All right, perfect. Beautiful. All right. Just want to make sure everybody's with me. All right, so this is Sean Casey once again. Brian uh, will hopefully be in towards the end. He got tied up with some family stuff, and uh, that's why there's two of us, because then one of us could actually uh, be around to take care of you guys. And so we're going to go through a lot of interesting stuff today um, and try to give you guys where we're going and um, putting things together. All right. So every Wednesday, we are here at 2 p.m. Eastern. Um, we host live training and or Q&A for our WebFire members. Uh, real important, I believe it's this weekend in the UK and probably elsewhere that uh, daylight savings time changes. And that means that, that next Wednesday for many of you, instead of it being like 7 p.m. in the UK, that this webinar starts, I think it will be 6 p.m., but it's going to move. Um, and then like another week will go by and the U.S. will change and then we'll get back to being a five-hour time spread um, actually between us at 2 p.m. Eastern here in GMT. Okay, so just be careful next week of the time. All right, whenever we do these trainees, they're going to feature myself, Sean, or Brian, or both of us. Sometimes we have a special guest to add value to our members. If you're here and you're registered for the series, you should get a reminder each week, but please block it out in your calendar so you can get these trainings. We're taking a lot of time and effort to build these for you, so being here is a smart thing to do, plus we give away money. But always we'll have the recordings in the members area within one day, and so you'll be able to have those and access to them always inside the members area, and they're archived forever. As you can see, there's a lot, a lot of training. Okay, so we want you to use these calls as an opportunity to get more training, ask strategy type questions, get feedback, make suggestions on what else you'd like to see. Um, and a special note, because and we tell you this every week, but a, a lot of times we'll get people like, oh, can you do a training on this, that, or the other thing? And most of that stuff, unless it's really esoteric, we've covered in past trainings. So you always want to be looking in the past trainings when you're like, hey, I wonder if there's a training on this, because chances are there is, because there are so many trainings that we have already done, and you're there. Okay, So you know, people ask us, like, how to rank, how to reply to leads, how to contact leads, all that kind of stuff. That's all been covered in prior webinars, so you can find that, and even though we keep coming back to key concepts. Our three rules for success, what we want you to always keep in mind, number one, follow the steps in the trainings we have you. Follow the steps, they work. We know this because it's what we use ourselves for our clients and our thousands of members have used successfully over the years. In fact, today we're actually celebrating, I saw some members who were in literally the original people who first saw Webfire. Some of them today celebrate the start of their fifth year using Webfire. So big congratulations to them. Um, they have been with us from the very beginning, and we are way more advanced now in software and strategies than then, but even then it was awesome. Now it's incredible. And don't give up. Look, you got, you got to keep moving forward with this stuff. Don't let little st things uh, bog you down. I mean, you can use our support when you need to, but a lot of stuff, uh, seriously, if you just go pop it into Google, if you're like, you know, how do I do this, uh, unless it's specific to our training, or, or you're like, you know, what does this mean, like what's an impression in internet marketing or whatever, just pop it into Google, you can get instant answers, okay, and, and just keep right on moving instead of having to wait. And last but not least, no whining, no negative attitudes, it's the quickest way to fail, Life's too short for you to whine or us to listen to you whine because I don't take it from my grandchildren and I love them, so I'm not taking it from you either, okay? We, we, we want to be big, happy, positive, okay? Life-affirming, supportive group here. So let's be sure to make sure you're in our Facebook group, okay? You can go to getwebfire.com forward slash FB group, ask to join. We'll get you approved before the end of the call, all right? because that's where we give away money. That's also where you can post up if you have anything, you want to ask somebody a question, the general, or you want to post up happy news. I'm going to celebrate some more happy news in just a minute. But we'll be giving away $100 to one of you who posts up there in response to today's post. 
uh, if you get up there before the call is over, and we'll talk about that. So one of the big questions we got, this is actually the number two question in terms of commonality that we got, was how do I do X, Y, Z, and several other things related to using schema? You guys had a lot of questions on schema, and we want to answer those, and, and we will. But first, Jackie also wrote in and said, thanks to Webfire, I sold a schema today, and I have a new client. So that's incredibly awesome, Jackie. And if you're on the call uh, on this webinar, would you post up and tell me how much you sold it for? Because I'm really curious how much you, how much you got, because you didn't tell us that in this. And the client is a bookkeeping and payroll service. Could I also sell him a lead service, even though we're in the UK and a lot of his business is local? And yes, you can sell him lead services. You could sell him other ranking services. You could sell him ongoing promotion with uh, content, with articles, with new pages to capture uh, people on his website. And you see you have the, exactly the right idea, which is number one, make a sale to a client. And number two, then they're, they're going to be excited and happy to deal with you if you're professional with them. And you could offer them more services because there's no business who wants less traffic, less leads, less sales, less customers, right? Uh, once, you, once you get your foot in the door, it just opens the door for much, much more. Um, all right. So that's truly awesome. Okay. Now, we're going to do more training on schema. That, we had so many questions on it, and there are so many different ways you can do this and go through it and everything else. So we're going to do a, a separate training in the next couple of weeks. I'm not sure if it'll be next week or the week after. We'll definitely let you know, and we'll record it, of course. But there's already training on the member site that answers most of the questions you sent in, and two specific trainings you can look at, well, actually three. So in the schema tool, there's a tutorial that tells you how to use the tool. Okay? And most of you, Frank, thankfully, didn't have questions on that because they're all answered in there. But there are two different webinars uh, that talk about schema, uh, specifically that you can look at in the, on the member site. One is called uh, New Important SEO Trend, and the other is Q&A New Tools. If you go through those trainings, they'll give you more information on schema, but we will create specific training on this that will be back to you in the next two weeks um, max. I, I just don't know which week it's going to be because I'm not sure what we're doing next um, yet. The number one question we got was, how do I use WebFire for affiliate marketing? Because a lot of you don't have products or your services of your own yet, which is absolutely fine. You don't need to have them. But this is uh, the number one most common question we got is, how do I use WebFire for affiliate marketing? Um, so we're going to break this down and talk to you about several things here. Uh, one is that before you can start promoting, you've got to decide what to promote. This is really, really important because I know we talk about how you can get traffic and leads for anything. But first, you've got to decide what anything is. So you've got to pick a niche, whether it's weight loss, whether it's fitness, bicycles, televisions, cell phone accessories, whatever that niche is. Okay. Pick a niche, and then pick a product or two in that niche. It's really important that you focus on something to start with. It's really, really important. Because I, I, if I asked a lot of you what do you want to sell, you would tell me, well, I want to sell everything. See, and that's all great, but, but if you know specifically what you want to sell, then you can create specific sales processes okay, or promotional processes to sell whatever that is that is specific. Um, somebody asked what that – did we post up the FB group in the chat, Sharon? Yeah. If Sharon's going to post the FB group, the Facebook group link up in the chat, that will pop underneath the question window in just a second so you all can join. If you're not already a member, there it is. Lucy, it's like magic. Okay. It's like magic. And it was Wednesday, and Sean got something to magically work. Okay. So we want to focus. Now, once you know what that product is, okay, a couple products that are, that are, of course, related in the same niche, you need to decide if there's something you could sell directly, or if you need some kind of a pre-sale page or a review page before you would, would sell it. So how do we figure this out? Well, well, let's think about some different kinds of products. So if I'm just going to refer people, for example, to somebody else's sales letter, then that doesn't necessarily need me to, to give some information before they get there, right? I wouldn't necessarily have to 
to make uh, in, in a pre-sale page is a page that gives the visitor information about a topic or a problem that they want to solve. Uh, for example, let's say that somebody says, um, I want to, he's looking, he's saying, you know, I, I want to know how to lose weight for, uh, you know, a woman who is over 50 years old, okay, and postmenopausal. So you could have a page which has an article, has content that talks about, you know, the challenge of doing this and ways, some solutions. And one of those solutions could be that they should buy a specific information product on this or a video course on this, or they should buy a cookbook that gives them the right meals or diet plan or just an, uh, a, a book that on the, with a diet plan, or it might be that there is a specific uh, weight loss supplement that you want to recommend and you want to explain why. And so the pre-sale answers the question related to the problem that the person poses or it wants help with, and then explains why what you have is a really good solution to that problem, how it's been shown to work for others, or uh, and, and that kind of stuff. Now, again, not necessary for many products, but for some products, you're going to get much better results if you're if you're sharing information that pre-sells somebody into the product. Um, and again, it, it all depends upon how you're going to go generate your traffic, but. You want to think through the best process so you can get the best results. All right. So make it sense to everybody so far. Okay, good. All right. Now, even if you don't initially make a website, you will definitely want to make a website at some point so you can, you can generate traffic for free from the search engines, right? Not necessary to start out with making a site, but you definitely will want to make a site at some point because then you can get keyword targeted traffic related to the product or service you're promoting or to the problem that you're helping to solve. And this is a really key concept that you have to you have to get in your head when we talk about promoting, I mean online or offline, it doesn't matter, but for our purposes primarily online, is that you've got really a couple different ways that people, that you can approach people or people are going to approach you, which is that they are either looking for a specific product, which in some cases somebody's like, I'm looking for a lamp. Okay. Well, okay. And if they're, then if they're like, I'm looking for a table lamp that's got, that can take a three-way bulb up to 150 watts that's going to send a lot of light in the room. Like person looking for a really specific lamp. Okay. That's great. They know what they, they know what they're looking for. And so, you know, it's relatively easy to, to respond to them, okay? But you're going to have a huge, huge, huge percentage of people for anything that are simply saying, I have a problem, okay? You know, whether it's I can't lose weight or I can't figure out how to get the right amount of light in that corner of the room or I don't know how to invest my money so I don't run out before retirement ends, or whatever it is, the problem that they have, okay, if you have the solution, that's great. But telling people that you have the solution without them understanding the relationship between their problem and your solution doesn't get their attention, doesn't bring them to your site or to your product to make the sale. Okay. So a lot of times the, the bridge, the connection to do that is, you know, your page that's got something on it that pre-sells. Okay. And by explaining why, you know, the the solution to losing weight for women over 50 that are postmenopausal is X, Y, Z. And then going down through and then referring them over to the product as opposed to just referring them to a weight loss supplement. And it's kind of like, oh, All right. It's also a lot easier to share good information or a good video um, when you're sharing in blogs and forums than it is to just send them direct to a product randomly along the way. Okay. Um, all right, great. So we'll definitely want to have a, a website at some point, if not initially. Okay. And then when you think about promoting, okay, 
in, inside of Webfire, there's obviously a lot of tools, a lot of resources, a lot of software, a lot of training. But all of promotion comes down to two broad concepts. Okay? Concept number one is people finding you. And the other concept is you finding people. Okay? And we break it down like this because when you start to think about it, you know, if people are going to find you, how are they going to find you? And, and obviously the only way they could do that is if you have some presence online. Whether it's a website, it's social media, it's a Facebook page, whatever that might be, you, you have to have some presence for people to find you. Okay? So you're going to have to have a, a, some kind of a site, a blog, something with keywords related to the product they're searching for or to the problems that they're searching to solve, right? Okay? So they can find you in the search engines. Now, again, you don't have to start there, but eventually you'll definitely want to get this in your arsenal because you know, once you can get a free flow of traffic coming from search engines, you know, life is pretty simple because you just got people showing up and you can put them on an email list, refer them to other people, etc. Now, to find people, you need to go to where they are, right? Okay. And so people find you where you are on your website, on Facebook tw pages, on Twitter, on Facebook, uh, you know, Instagram, wherever, but you find people by going where they are, where they're hanging out, okay? and you can easily find them based on the words they use. And I'll explain that in a minute. But you can find them on forums, on blogs, on Q&A sites, on Twitter, and you can use the WebFire tools to quickly and easily identify these people in situations on those sites. Okay? Now, to find people you're going to want to make a broad list of the terms they'd use when discussing this topic. Okay. A lot of people, and, and I understand you just go and you start playing with the tools, but they go into like the real-time lead finder and they type in some term which could be make money online or it might be uh, something uh, like one of our clients that wants to sell I'm trying to think of the entire term that they that they searched for, and they were like, "No one's look, no one's talking about this." It was like um, vegan anti-aging something supplements. There's another term in there, right? So, not a, the phrase that the average person would use. Now, if someone's using that, they're probably a highly targeted prospect. Okay, but. You know, would many people be interested in anti-aging? Yes. Would they be interested in anti-aging supplements? Yes. But they aren't necessarily posting up on a forum or a blog or a Q&A site the really specific search term like, you know, vegan anti-aging something supplements, right? Okay. And if, if you're going to just go, well, I only want people that are already looking for this, then you're going to have a really small audience because a lot of people don't even know it exists, right? And they certainly don't know your product exists. So a lot of people will get in there, they'll be like, oh, well, you know, I sell, you know, something like, like a really specific thing. Like you think everyone's supposed to know this, right? But they don't know what this is. They don't know that this is a solution to the problem. So you can't just search for, in these lead sources for uh, like a very tiny specific product and expect that, you know, if not everybody knows about it, that they're all going to be there. So you want to start with this big list. You want to think of all the problems that people would be talking about, right? So people that, that want to lose weight talk about it, right, in all kinds of different ways from, you know, I've got to drop a few pounds to I need to lose weight for my wedding to I got diagnosed with diabetes, or my knees hurt all the time. I, you know, and 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 you know they're giving you symptoms of problems that are related to you know stuff that weight loss would help, right? So you, you want to put down brand names like people who are doing weight loss. They would be using brand names of of uh, people that would be competitors, right? So they might be using like Weight Watchers or Jenny Craig or what, whatever is uh, you know specific in your country. They'll be using um, competitors' names um, of, uh, you know, so other people that might be selling, you know, say info products or supplements, they'll, they'll be using really specific product names, so the names of supplements, uh, whether they're, they're a brand name or they're the key ingredients. Okay? You can see how you can, you can now come up with lots and lots of terms that people are talking about 
related to whatever it is that you're trying to promote. And so you want to make a big list to start with. Now, you won't have to use all of the list all of the time, and you can save these searches in WebFire uh, in a lot of the tools, so they can all happen automatically. But what you then want to do as you start going through the list and searching and seeing where your best results are going to come from when you search, for instance, you search you know, vegan anti-aging something supplement, and you find out, boy, you know, I search that every day for a week, and no one ever uses that term yet. I'm ahead of my time. Well, that's great. Okay, so maybe you don't need to look at that one every day, but you know, anti-aging supplement. You know, help them getting older. What do people do when they're getting older to slow down aging? Right. All those kind of phrases that people would use in normal conversation. Because remember, the people that are on these forums and blogs and Twitter and everything else, none of them are are writing in a way that's like, I want you to contact me because I need to buy a product. Right. In, in, or at least in most cases, they're just having conversations with other people. They're asking for help. They're providing advice. But they're using all the terms that let you find them. So you need to think about how do these people talk and what are the terms they use that I can go and find? Because once you can go and reach out to them, then you're able to be able to do that. Okay? Um, somebody asked a great question. Okay? Um, Philip asked, are the posts that you make on Facebook and Twitter and Pinterest, well, and all these forums and Q&A sites and things, are they considered backlinking from high authority sites? And the answer is yes. Hey, these, these create great backlinks into your site. Uh, if you're referring them, for instance, to a YouTube video, which is a great way to refer people to, because uh, you can make a very simple video using WebFire that would you know, be information about something, and you can post that on YouTube, and you can backlink that YouTube video to help it get more traffic and rankings. Okay. So these are all besides getting people to be interested in responding to you, a great way to create uh, incoming links to your website to help it rank. Okay. So going going back through here in a second. Okay. All right. Recap. You're going to pick a niche. Pick a product or two, decide how you can promote this. Okay, then you got to decide: people finding you, or are you finding people? You'll do both eventually, of course. All right? The fastest thing you can do, of course, is to go find people. Okay, go find people that you can simply refer to, whatever that product or service is right, that you want to refer them to, and then. The way you're going to find them is this big list of terms. Because you, you got to go broad and big and deep so that you can get the most responsive people out of there. Do not just start um, searching just one thing. Like I get people that um, a lot of our people want to promote things about products about make money online. Okay? And, and so they go search make money online or make money, and you'll find a lot of results for that because people are talking about that. But you can go much, much deeper than that because you can find people that are, uh, say, like, you know, I, I, well, I've got to get a new job or I've got, to, I've got to make more money or I need more money or, you know, my dollars don't go as far as they used to or, you know, uh, you know how do I get out of debt? How do I pay off my credit cards? or people that will be uh, talking about how they hate their boss or they hate their job. People talking about uh, specific competitor products, once again. So uh, a lot of you promote the different business opportunity, MLM, uh, networking, marketing companies, and those kind of things. Well, some people will be asking questions about should they join your specific company program, but other people will be talking about MLM or network marketing companies that are your competitors. and there's so many of them out there, and some of them will not be satisfied with what's happening for them in a specific company for whatever reason, the support from their upline or the products or whatever. Okay. So you can use all of those search terms to find a ton of people in this exact same way to be able to get um, answers for all that. Okay. Um, Jacqueline asked, I went to join as an affiliate. They wanted my website before I could go ahead, which I didn't have. Do all of them have this requirement? Um, a lot of the companies will want to know what your website is. 
uh, it's it's pretty much like a standard entry form, but you could do something literally as simple because most of them are not going to bother to go look seriously at it because they're just going to auto-approve you into the program. Uh, so if you don't have a website, go to blogger.com, B-L-O-G-G-E-R.com, and just literally make a website. And then you'll have a URL that you can give them. Even if you don't buy a domain name and 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 all that kind of stuff, you, you can instantly have a website. So you have something to put in there that would be a valid URL. And you can just put you know any simple concept on there okay, um, to be able to do that. Okay. Uh, someone asked, how many keywords can you use for this list? The answer is, there's no limit. That's why I want you to make a big list. You will find the keywords that get you the right kind of people you're looking for as you go through and you know the list two or three times, you'll start to narrow down and be like, wow, okay, there's a lot of people doing this. And it's not always what you think it will be. That's why you need to make this big list, right? Um, because then you'll get yourself a broad swath of people to be able to go and start identifying, oh, these people are really interested in all this stuff and narrowing it down for that, okay? Um, somebody asked, what are they looking for on your website? Oh, if, if somebody is um, looking as an affiliate, uh, a company looking whether or not to approve as an affiliate, then um, they're oftentimes just looking to see what, what content you have or what niche you're in. Um, but that's going to be, you know, sometimes these like really big, like if you want to be, I can't even think of an affiliate for whom that would care, but some companies would care and they're going to analyze what you have in your site. But you could, could go become an affiliate for ClickBank or JVZoo or Amazon or you know, a lot of other companies, and, and no one cares. No one's going to look because they just want you to send them people that will buy their stuff. Um, they're, they're not really worried about it. Some companies, though, um, you know, think of affiliates as people that are like, promoting their brand and creating content on websites and stuff, so they'll go look at your website, but that's not the case for most people. Uh, really not uh, a big thing um, in most cases. Um, but if you get turned down, just ask them what it is. Um, all right, so uh, Sharon asked, how long will backlinks, how long until backlinks start working for your site? Well. Two, two parts of that answer. One is, number one, if you're on you know, somewhat popular sites, like if you were to, um, you, they'll get picked up by the search engines almost immediately. For instance, let's say you're on a, a really active blog that has lot, or blogger forum that has lots of users. Google's there every day with their bots picking up the new information that's up there. So they're going to pick that up every day. How quickly they adjust their index, it's hard to say. But if you're in a less competitive term, then they're going to, that's going to tend to have weight much, much more quickly than, for instance, if you're trying to be number one or rank on page one for the broad term of weight loss. Okay. But the backlinks can help a great deal within just a few days. Uh, especially when you're on for uh, less competitive terms for things. Um, let's see. Do, 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 do. Okay, somebody asked, when I add an affiliate link on my site, will I, uh, do I need to cloak it? Do I need to have it be no follow? I heard Google frowns on affiliate links. Google doesn't care about affiliate links. Okay, What Google cares about is whether or not the content on your page is keyword targeted to match what they are um, showing to someone in the search results. Okay? Now, you can uh, cloak them, you can use redirects, and, and, and those, those are really simple to do. And just, if, if you just go Google, because I can't, I can't tell you how to do this without Running around, but if you just go to Google and type in cloak affiliate link or redirect link, you'll you'll see real quick an example. It's very simple. It's just uh, using a, a a very simple page or redirect code or even a tiny URL. There's lots of free redirect services that you can use um, that would let you keep that link off your page if you wanted to. Follow and no follow doesn't matter. Google reads them all anyway. But Google doesn't care whether or not you have an affiliate link on your page. Where Google would care is if you're buying advertisements from Google 
to a page and then redirecting those people to an affiliate offer, Google doesn't like that. But you're not buying traffic, you're getting free traffic based on the content on your pages. Okay? And if you go look at a lot of high-ranking pages, you'll find they have lots and lots of affiliate links on them and lots of other network links on them. Okay. Um, all right. I'm not going to cover here like how to how to research the keywords and uh, build a mini site because we already have a training on that. So so you can go through and see the entire training and get the PDF training part four, um, how to build a mini site or a blog. In the member trainings, look for the site that's called Create Mini Sites because it's all about creating mini sites, and that will tell you the the site creating part of things. Okay, now. Let's get on to more questions. And, and, and as we go through, these questions have shorter answers because a lot of stuff I just covered now for what many of you are looking for. Um, question, how do I promote my products on Amazon? So we've got a lot of people that are selling um, their own books, uh, fiction and nonfiction on Amazon, people selling pet products, people selling jewelry. And so this answer is slightly longer than some of the other ones because you need to understand Amazon, first of all. So Amazon, obviously, this massive retailer doing $100 billion plus a year in sales, great place to go sell stuff if you have products that you want to go post up there and sell. You can just add stuff to Amazon, and, and they might randomly choose to sell it, but what helps is if you can create sales, because the more sales you can create on Amazon, the more Amazon will help you sell more. Kind of like, you know, so the people that sell a lot sell a lot, and the people that don't sell a lot don't sell a lot. It's kind of a you know a strange conundrum. Okay, now Amazon has what they call the BSR, the best seller ranking, which I, I refer in the first sentence to as a product ranking. Okay, and they rank your site, or rank your product in multiple different categories. Okay, and in doing that they consider several things. Number one is you know, how much you sell of a product in a category versus other people in that product within a time frame. So many of their bestseller rankings, the BSR, update every hour. Like the book um, rankings update every single hour. So they, they literally will change every single hour in all the books for all the book categories. Okay, so when we're promoting a book to be a bestseller book, you, we can see ourselves literally jumping, you know, great leaps and bounds up the bestseller ranking because we put up targeted promotion in a in a specific period of time. Okay? One of the things that people don't consider is the fact because they they initially think, well, so if I send any traffic and anybody buys anything from Amazon, that's a good thing. Well, yes, it is, but you don't want to send garbage traffic to Amazon because if you do what's going to happen is you're not going to get good conversion rates and part of what Amazon considers in whether or not to promote your product and refer other people on your uh, on the site to your product is how well it converts because they can send traffic to any number of similar products but they're not going to send traffic if it doesn't convert right i mean they can send it to you know let's say your product converts one out of 10 people that see it on Amazon and somebody else converts one out of 100 they're obviously not going to waste their traffic on the page that doesn't convert. Okay? They're not going to care why it doesn't convert. Their algorithm and their system is just not going to send traffic. Okay? So the more you sell on Amazon, though, especially that converts well, the more traffic Amazon will send to your product to try and sell more. Okay? And you want to try and focus your promotion into a short period. So if you had a choice, if you're promoting an, you know, 20 Amazon products, to focusing on promoting all 20 with individual promotions or one specific thing you focused on, you'd want to focus on one, and you want to focus on that one as much of a concentrated burst of effort as you can get. So let's say you're saying, oh, I've got seven hours this week that I could focus on this one product. Well, you'd be better off doing lots of stuff in one day than one hour a day. Because the more you can boost it in a short period of time, the more it jumps up, okay, the bestseller rank, okay, and that's going to help you get more sales, okay? So you obviously want long-term, ongoing promotion, but if you want Amazon to kick in and start, you know, helping you get the benefit of their platform and all the people visiting, you've got to jump up that BSR, and that's, that's a big thing. 
Now, what's the best way to promote on Amazon partly depends upon what your product is. And this goes back to the same thing we talked about with affiliate stuff is, is it something that if someone showed up, they would just buy? Or, you know, let's say it's, uh, I don't know, a pair of socks that cost $10, right? Doesn't require a lot of, you know, pre-sale work, it's a pair of socks, okay? Or it's, uh, you know, a, a teacup or whatever, right? I mean, there's not a lot you could say about it. People either like it or they don't, right? But if you're selling supplements, for example, which a lot of these are sold on Amazon, millions and millions of dollars, when you're, if you just said to somebody, go buy the supplement on Amazon, you know, they might comparison shop or they might start looking around more, right, because it's a, it's a higher priced item. It's $59 or $99, and they might start looking at the competition. So you want to think about whether or not, okay, they uh, would buy right away, and if you should instead pre-sell them, okay? um, like we just talked about, where you'd have a, pages that would answer problems that your supplement or whatever your other product would solve, okay? and that would let you send much more targeted traffic to Amazon, more likely to convert, and from Amazon's standpoint, when they see that targeted traffic come in and convert better, they're going to be like, wow, if we send traffic to this page, it converts well and this company's consistently moving up the bestseller rank, and they're getting good reviews, et cetera, okay? So, uh, you know, and again, two ways to promote, right? We can have people find us, okay, both on Amazon, but, but on a separate site, and, you know, since we already have the products up for sale, we could go find interested people. And again, same concept in forums, blogs, and Q&A sites, okay? People will be talking in threads about some problem or a product they're looking for, and you can literally tell them, oh, listen, I sell this and it fits for what you're trying to do. Just go to Amazon and search for this and just give them the specific product title to search for, okay? Um, because you're going to do two things there, okay? You're going to have... Um, People that can go and search there. You don't have to worry about links that are coming out of forums that somebody may or may not like. But when someone goes to Amazon and they search for your product title and then they click through and they buy your product, that's another big you know, clue to Amazon. Wow, people are showing up searching for this product, finding it, and they're buying it at a high conversion rate. Again, that's going to help Amazon to love your product, love your conversion, send you more traffic along the way. Okay. Now, it doesn't make sense to send them direct to the product, then just invite them to get free content, okay? Same concept, go there, uh, get, get involved in the thread, and send them to your free content, a free video, video free article, so, something that answers the question that you're trying to help them resolve by buying the product, okay? Um, and, and to do that, you'll also want to set up a separate site or a separate blog separate from your Amazon site, that you can have keyword targeted pages on so you can get those ranked. And again, that's all covered in the mini site training. But you're going to want to be able to get those pages ranked and have content on there that both you're going to worry about getting ranked and then other content that might be slightly different where you're simply going to be answering questions that are the common things that people would ask. And then the answer is, buy my product because it solves this problem, right? Same exact thing we talked about with as an affiliate. You were doing here. Just pretend you're like an affiliate trying to sell your product on Amazon. Same idea. Okay. So we want to solve common problems because people are looking to solve a problem. Whether that problem is they need a new teacup or the problem is they need a weight loss pill or whatever that problem is, we want to help solve that. When people are on your website and you run them through pre-sell for an Amazon product, one thing you can do to try to help your conversion rate and also track that uh, this is being effective is to give people a coupon. Okay, it doesn't have to be a huge amount of money. Any savings is a good savings, right? But you can have coupon codes that you give out specifically off your site, and you'll know that somebody came and got a discount uh, that came from your site, and you can track that, and it also incentivizes someone to actually do that. You also want to build an email list, okay? Because when you build an email list, from your site visitors, you can follow up with them. Okay, that's one thing about sending traffic directly to Amazon. You only get access to buyer info. You don't get all the other visitors. Uh, but, but by referring people to your site, 
where you're going to pre-sell, you can build an email list because you can get people and invite them to join your list and just offer them again. You know, a free report, a free video, some bribe to join, a discount coupon. Um, a lot of times you'll see on sites where someone will say, you know, click here to get a coupon uh, to go get this from Amazon, and they'll ask you to enter their, your email address. And then on the next page, they'll show you the coupon code along with the link directly to the product on Amazon to go and buy it. So that's, that's a good way to do that. All right, so got that. All right, next question. What's the best way to drive customers to our subscription service for website management and support? Now, I was hesitant to put this question in because I don't want to confuse all of you. If you just have a regular hosting account, you know, normal hosting, smaller account, you don't worry about what these guys do, okay? Because you don't need their services. Okay? So don't get confused about this, but this is a really good question other than that. Okay? Now, but if you have a, uh, let's say you, you rent your own server and you need someone to manage that because you have, let's say, 50 websites and, and you've got a much more complicated business, then you need somebody to pay attention to your server, keep it up to date, keep it secure. Uh, maybe you need somebody to, to make tweaks and changes or set up a, a new software on it or something like that. Then you need somebody who's got the skill to do that. Okay? This, these people, our Web, Webfire customers, have a service that provides that that's a low-cost service because a lot of the companies that provide this service, like if they were to buy in the States or, the, or, or, or be in the UK, uh, would charge like 50 or or $100 an hour every time you want them to breathe. So they, they apply the, the, some software updates and they charge you $100. So that gets expensive real quick. So they provide a service that is a lower cost alternative to this. So how would they promote that? Well, th this will start to all sound the same and you'll see how all these marketing things apply to everything. But in this case, number one, I would first go out and look for, because I'm going to guess they already have a website, okay? Go out and look for people who are posting about this topic, okay? That are saying, hey, I'm trying to find somebody to manage my websites. I'm trying to find someone to manage my server, you know? But at the same time, you also can look for competitors, the names of hosting companies, those kind of things, uh, the names of different software that they might be using to manage a server like, like Linux, okay? That, and you're going to quickly find where people are hanging out looking for help with this problem where they either don't like the service provider they have or they're looking for a service provider or they've been trying to do this stuff themselves, they've got it all screwed up or they got hacked because nobody was doing this on their server and so their server got vulnerable over time. Again, 99% of the people listening to this right now, this doesn't apply to you because you'll just have a site hosted on a server that's managed by the, the big hosting company that's doing this. Okay? So don't, don't get all paranoid and panicky on me on this, all right? Okay? But you can see how you would just go look for the people that are talking about this topic, needing the service, complaining that the service they have sucks or it's too expensive, or that they have problems like, you know, all oh, my sites got hacked. All oh, my sites got hacked, or my WordPress site got hacked, or this thing got hacked, or whatever. That's the person that needs somebody who's managing and looking out for them, right? So people with a problem, you have the solution to the problem. People with the problem of it's too expensive, or no one's managing it or the guys aren't paying attention, you can solve that. And number two, okay, if they don't, I'm going to guess these guys are in the hosting management solution business. They have their own website, but they, they want to have not just information on their website about what they do, but again, keyword targeted pages for the way people would be looking for this information, as well as I would have the solution pages, right? The answers to common questions and problems that people raise when they're in forums and blogs, searching on Google, etc., uh, doing all this kind of stuff. All right. Next question. How do I attract visitors and leads for stress management? And this person provides uh, stress management information, how to manage stress. Okay, like having a webinar with several hundred people asking questions all at once. Stress management. This is what you need. I, I thought this was hilarious when I saw this question. Okay. Now, one of the things that, that this person um, mentioned in the post was when they look for the term stress management, 
they they find a lot of like big company sites. Uh, they find uh, you know magazine sites because it's it's a common term used by people, right? Stress management. But you got to flip that around, okay? You obviously want to have keyword targeted pages on your site and blog for stress management. But this is where when we talked about making the big list of terms that people use, right? People that are like losing their minds, that are overstressed, right? They aren't necessarily saying, I need to find stress management, right? Okay, they have the problem to which you have the solution, okay? But they don't necessarily equate their problem with, I need to go find a stress management guy or gal to help me manage my stress or to teach me this or sell me an ebook or provide a service or counseling or whatever, right? Okay? But if you start looking for the people talking about the problems they have, okay, then you will find a whole ready-made audience of people for whom you have the solution. Okay? Much more so in, in this case if you're finding that when you search stress management, that you're finding the people that are that are like, oh, you know, we're talking about our stress management program today, blah, blah, blah. Okay, boring doesn't help you, right? But the person that's losing their mind because they've got seven kids, okay, that person, okay, you know, right? And, probably, and, and you start thinking about this phrase, right? Do people use like, losing my, I'm losing my mind, okay? It's not exactly the search term, right, that you would say someone would type in, but in a conversation, in a forum, okay, you could see people, people writing that in, right, in a post on Twitter, right? That's the way that people would actually talk. All right. How do I promote my art website? Okay, this woman is the artist. This is a unique challenge because if you assume, which I'm going to right now, that nobody knows who you are so they don't know to go find you yet, Okay. Then what you need to do is focus on getting in front of people who like the style of the kind of art that you have, that you create, and who buy similar art. Okay. So a really important thing. Okay. It's this uh, part in marketing lesson. I remember learning this back way back when I when I was practicing law. Okay. If you watch two lawyers walk into a room, and one of them has an absolutely gorgeous, shiny, polished, no scuff mark leather briefcase. This is back when lawyers actually carried briefcases. Instead of backpacks or whatever, right? Rolling cases. And the other lawyer comes in with, you know, something that looks like it was genuine imitation leather. It's scuffed, ripped, papers coming out of the seams. It looks like there's one thread still holding it together. And you took a look at these two gentlemen, and if you sold briefcases, your immediate thought would be, wow, that guy with the falling apart briefcase really needs a briefcase. I'm going to go sell him a briefcase. Now, the truth is he either can't afford a briefcase or he doesn't want to buy a briefcase because it's pretty obvious to one and all, including him, that he needs a briefcase, but he's not a briefcase buyer. The other lawyer, though, with the shiny, cool-looking briefcase, Okay. Chances are he's got five more like it right at, right at home, five more cool briefcases, and he wears the one, brings the one he wants to when he brings it because okay. buyers are buyers. So the person who owns five briefcases is much more likely to buy a sixth briefcase than the guy who owns the crappy beat-to-death briefcase who could have bought one but chooses not to. Okay. So when it comes to art or music or anything that is uh, specific to a taste, you need to go find the people that are already buying that kind of thing and try to go interact with them and interest them and showcase your wares. Obviously, art is a very visual medium okay? uh, because people, you know, they see it and they, they get impressions and it, and it impacts the senses. So you, where you're going to best find those people is in forums and Facebook groups, but also things like Instagram and Pinterest where people... Snapchat, where people are posting pictures and images all the time, right? So you can you can interact with other people's Pinterest and Instagram accounts of things with their artwork and showcase your artwork, especially whenever you have anything new. And you want to build followings in these social media and also 
try to get people on an email list so you can announce uh, when you've got an, a new piece of art, uh, a new special offer, a new limited edition. Uh, you didn't actually mention if you were painting or pottering, making pottery or what you were doing. Okay, but in all of these, um, you you've got to go out there and and get to the people that are already interested in this, because. Um, and, and, and the other thing that I have to say for all of you people that are like artistic and creative, uh, you do have to avoid the starving artist syndrome. Um, I had this conversation in an event over the weekend with someone whose husband is a, um, not, not just a, a fabulous guitar player, but teaches the only master's guitar program in the U.S. for people who play acoustic, acoustic steel string guitar. Okay. And he's brilliant and creative and has like a load of content and trainings and all kinds of different stuff. I'm not interested, doesn't even worry about selling it, doesn't worry about making money. Which is fine, I'm not being critical because that's his choice. But if you want to be in business to get paid to be an artist, you have to remember that your job is to sell stuff. Okay? Um, and so for a lot of artists, it's a hard leap to make because they just want to be creative. Okay? And, and I don't want to, you know, cut down your creative creativity, I just want you to get paid. All right, so you have to also be looking at what are other people doing that seem they seem to be able to sell, you know, at a good clip, what's hot, what are people responding to? Um, and, you know, in a lot of cases it's it's, you know, lower price things that might look, you know, not exactly your style, but if they pay the bills while you create, you know, then the world's next masterpiece, that's a good thing. Okay. Here's an interesting question. I want to start a ministry to developing to develop mentally challenged people. So what's the best way to promote this service? And the answer to this comes on and is really similar to the answer to the other questions, right? Now in this case, first of all, you're going to need a site because you want to sell the service or provide the service, I shouldn't say sell, to people. And so you will need to make a website with at least some basic information about what you're providing. Okay. And again, the more that you can be really specific uh, about what that is, how that helps people, uh, common questions that people would have, uh, the services and how it's helped other people, uh, there certainly are going to be people that are, that are looking for um, help in this area, again, they may not use you know, clinical terms and industry terms, niche specific terms that you would use. They just use everyday layman language. You know, like, oh, you know, my son, daughter, whoever, friend has this problem. Okay, they don't know how to describe it correctly. So you, as you're going out to reach out to them, okay, or putting the information on your site, you need to, to make sure that you get into the layman version of language so people can then connect with your site and understand, oh, look, you know, this is, this is the solution to my problem, okay? Um, you will find these people out posting up these questions on forums and blogs and Q&A sites, trying to find solutions to uh, the issues that they face um, for themselves or in this, in this case often for family members. Um, so same idea, uh, but in this case you would at least have to have a site because you need a place to send people to uh, to actually offer your service along the way. All right, and like everything else, it's going to come down to A, going to where interested people are already hanging out, discussing these type of products, okay? And then B, whoops, the heck did that come from? Oh, uh, you know what, that was, hang on. Do, 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 do. Sorry about that. Hang on. We got way out of whack here, and I got a slide that doesn't make any sense to me, and I wrote them all. Um, anyway, I think this was the, was the slide that was supposed to answer something else. Sorry to be confusing. After a while, you guys sent in so many questions and trying to get down to all of them. Um, I wrote this page, but this actually, you know, again, oh, this is um, the answer. Hang on. This is the answer to the question. This question is going to come up in a minute. We'll remember this question. Oh, okay. I know what this is the answer to now. Okay. So somewhere here, there's a question. 
that somebody asked and it might pop up in a minute. All right. So the question was, because I might have deleted the question. Okay, the question was, I have a Shopify site or an e-commerce site that sells jewelry, and somebody who sells housewares, and someone sells something else like uh, pet products or something. You know, how do I promote that? Okay. Um, number one, interested people, right? So if we're going to go promote it and going to go reach out and find people that might want to buy our products, we need to go where the interested people are hanging out on blogs and forums. Okay? And so if we sell products that they'd be interested in, we could go out there and try to you know, get ourselves uh, some clients out of blogs, forums, Facebook groups, wherever, right, that are already interested in these type of products, whatever they are. You know, uh, you know for instance, jewelry, you're going to find a lot of people that are interested in jewelry, especially women. And as we hit certain dates like you know, Christmas and Valentine's Day, men are magically interested in jewelry to keep women happy, right? Okay. Um, and once you get buyers, you can get repeat buyers from that if you follow up with them, of course, for jewelry. Because again, jewelry buyers are jewelry buyers. They'll buy more jewelry. Okay. Um, then the other thing is that you want to try to get your product pages ranked if you can. Okay. Um, now, if you have a Shopify store, Shopify is a wonderful platform. The only downside is they control your domain, your HTML code, um, and so there's a very limited amount you can do to actually adapt and update um, the Shopify web pages. You can, however, control the names of images uh, that you load onto the site, uh, and you'll want to because you can name your images so that they, they get targeted. Um, and, and when, you know, having a Shopify site means that Google should index it very quickly, okay? Um, so you can work on getting your product images ranked. So if somebody's searching for, um, you know, like, uh, uh, you know, a Doction coffee mug, right, and you have that one and you have that title, uh, there's a chance that they're going to find your image and then click through to your site and be able to buy that. And, of course, Separate from your store, you can create a blog or a site, either way, it doesn't matter, a blog is a type of site, that you could create keyword targeted pages on to get search engine traffic um, that you can then refer over to your site. Because again, a lot of you sell a lot of different stuff and it's the same concept, right? You're just feeding people into your store from your site. Same thing we talked about at the beginning as an affiliate. All right, how can I promote my training for teaching English to speakers of other languages, specifically by using WebFire to search social media. So this was an interesting question, because the first thing is, I have no idea the phraseology that people would use to discuss wanting to learn English um, on social media. So like if they're on Twitter and they mention, hey, I, I need to take an English class or something, uh, then you definitely could pick them off of social media like that. Uh, I'm also not sure if they would post that in English or they would post that in their native language or uh, another language, right? Because you're talking about them learning English as a second, third, fourth, fifth language, whatever it might be. Um, I'm still working on getting it the first time. But at the same time, you can probably find people on uh, Q&A sites, on forums, posting questions kind of like this, like, What's the best way to learn English um, in, in those kind of things? I, I'm going to guess that a lot of those would get posted in other languages, like somebody posting on a Spanish version, lang Spanish language version of a site, asking in Spanish what's the best way to learn English, because they're more likely probably to post that in Spanish than English. Um, so you, you know you might need to, uh, and you 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 know may well be multilingual and be able to do that. And um, you're definitely going to want to have a site or a blog uh, that is, again, same kind of mini-site concept where you're going to have uh, keyword-targeted content on search terms that people would use that are looking to learn English so you could refer them to, to buy your training, right? So th things related to you know learning to speak English, learning English as a second language, um, which is – it. That, which is how it gets referred to a lot, at least here in the U.S. Um, you used a term, I think it was T-E-S-O-L, which I had actually never heard of, teaching English to speakers of other, yeah, English speakers of other languages or something. But, but anyway, it's a term I, I'd never seen before. Um, 
and you find the terms that people are doing. Um, question, how to choose low competition niches? Well, this is like a trick question, okay? Because there are no low competition niches with a big volume of sales. Uh, and, and I wanted to answer this because I don't want you to, to be thinking, if you went way back to early, early internet marketing training, online marketing training, back like 14, 15 years, a long, long time ago, okay, you'd have people that, that taught training, and I'm sure there are people still mimicking some of this, they're like, well, just go find the niche that no one's selling anything yet, yet but the people want to buy and go fill that niche. That niche doesn't exist any longer. If it ever did, it doesn't exist today. The Internet's really big. Facebook's got 1.7 billion users, right, every month. Okay, But that doesn't matter because what that training did was create a whole lot of people that were trying to go find the magic thing that nobody was selling but that everybody wanted to buy. It is way easier to go find the markets with lots and lots of buyers, and all you need is a small part of it. So if you're in, let's say, the multi-billion dollar weight loss market, right, you don't need the whole market. You just need like a little smidgen. A little smidgen is six figures a year. Okay? So what we want to have are high converting products, products that we know people are going to buy if we get them traffic. Okay, And then we're going to find keywords using the keyword tool that we have a good chance to rank for. You can just go into the keyword tool and it will show you in green. Uh, and There's training on the keyword tool, but you search for keywords, it will show you green is good, low competition, reasonable amount of traffic. Okay, And then you can also, again, like we talked about, go look for the leads of people that are interested in that specific product or similar products. Okay, Same concept that we've talked about, right? but don't in, in spend a lot of time trying to find the part where there's no competition. Because if there's no competition, there's no volume. There's no sales volume. Right? We're not worried about whether or not there's competition. We're just worried about whether or not there are high converting products and lots of potential buyers. Because if we have those two things, that part of things, can, the rest of it can work out good. Um, somebody asked, how deep into WebFire do I have to be before asking clients to access their sites to improve their rankings? Okay. Um, this is like a trick question because um, you don't got to go really deep. You just have to be able to use the specific tools to do whatever it is that you're offering to do, or you can outsource it. But if you, for instance, do a website analysis for somebody, the website analysis is going to tell you what needs to be fixed, right? And you can either follow the prompts inside of WebFire and our training to fix them, or you could just go outsource it for a few dollars to someone else if you wanted to to get them to fix it. And either way, you would get paid a lot of money. Um, for doing that, right? Okay, so don't ever think it. But this brings me to a really, 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 really important point that I'm going to digress on as soon as I take a drink. Is that a lot of you get into web fire, into internet marketing, and you're getting a little overwhelmed. And I understand why, because there's all this stuff you could do. There's all these ways to remote. There's all these potential products and everything else. And two common things happen. One is you're worried you're going to promote the wrong one, and what if that's not the right one? You're way overthinking that. Long as you think that it looks like something or you know it's something that people are buying a lot of, like a top-selling ClickBank product or top-selling product at Amazon or whatever, then you're, you're going to be just fine. Okay. And the second thing is that because so much of this is new to you and you're out of your comfort zone, you want to learn everything about everything before you actually go do anything, or you talk to a business, or you start promoting, or you even set up a website. And that's a huge mistake. The internet is a really big place, and marketing on the internet and promoting and traffic is such a huge, huge concept that I truly believe there is no one in the world who completely understands all of it, because I don't think anybody can. Mark Zuckerberg, last I just saw, worth $55 billion, you know, is the owner of, founder, the founder of Facebook and the main owner, right? Okay. 
smart guy, one of the brightest guys about the internet, he can't know it all. Because there's too much, it grows too fast, it changes too fast. But the thing is, you don't have to know it all. You don't even have to know a huge chunk of it, you just have to know a part that works. Okay? You just have to know a part that works for you. That you can put up a site with a couple of review pages and get traffic to it. Or you can go directly to a blog or forum and generate leads. Or you can go to a business and with a site analysis and just be like, guys, look, black and white right here. Okay? It sucks. You're on page 17. Your competitors are eating your lunch. Right? The size that your site's butt ugly. I mean, even if people found it, they wouldn't be buying from you anyway. You need help. Right? You don't got to be a rocket scientist, right, to read the report. Okay. And again, if you get in over your head, go to an outsourced site, go to Fiverr, go to Freelancer, go to Upwork, whatever, and get somebody who's an outsourcer who will go do all the complicated part if you want to go into rebuilding their site. Somebody can do that for you real cheap. Don't even got to touch it, okay? All right. Um, so we posed a good question. How do I make money from my gardening site? They have a site and they have a lot of good information and there's a blog and there's content and things there. Um, how do they make money from their gardening site? And, and they, in fact, they even said, you know, should I sell an ebook? And the first thing you ought to do, because it looks like a site that, that should be getting traffic, is build an email list because you want to build an email list so you can follow up with people. And since you're, pro you're providing all these, these updated posts and gardening tips and everything else, you can get people to subscribe to the, the newsletter to get these. And then you could have ads in the and send other promos and things to the list. And the second is, before you even stop and go to the work to create your own ebook, okay, is much more quickly way to make money is just offer products as an affiliate. Well, one of the biggest mistakes that people make is they're like, oh, well, I, you know, I have a gardening site. I should sell an ebook on gardening. I'm going to write one. And you don't have time. Now, if you have all the time and you love to write and you can knock out an ebook on gardening in the next three days, then then do it. That's awesome. Okay, but most of us would be like, oh my god, I have to write a book. Wow, this ain't going to be pretty. This is going to take a long time. I don't have this time. See, and 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 so the book is standing between you and making money, and months are going to go by and you're not going to get the book done. Now you could also go hire somebody to write the book for like five hundred dollars. Um, to write, you know, like a 80 or 100 page ebook if you wanted to, um, but and, and that's fine. But don't let the lack of having your own book stop you from making money, because you could go refer them to any number of other ebooks, uh, videos, books on Amazon. Uh, they could you could refer them to seed companies to buy seeds, to buy plants, to buy tools. Right, a lot of things you could refer people to as an affiliate and make money, and you don't have to create any of them, okay? Um, and which means that you could start making money from putting people on a list and, and, and otherwise referring people to these products like tomorrow. Okay? In, instead of spending months and months and months and months creating something that you don't need to create to start making money, you can go make the ebook later. Okay? But in the meantime, I want to see you make money. All right, another question. How do I promote a free game as an affiliate that I want people to download? This is an interesting question because you know, you gotta you gotta figure out where the people are that would be most interested in this. Okay. Now there are obviously a lot of people that play games and download games and, and so you've got to go find the people and, and if people are searching for games in this niche, then you could set up a site or a blog that you can get ranked so that people who are searching for this game or or games in this niche would could find the blog and then you could explain to them about the cool new game that they should go and download and play, right? Okay. Um, also, there are certainly a huge amount of gamers that are in forums, they're on blogs, they're talking about games, they're in Facebook groups, right? They're talking about games all the time because this is a huge, huge, huge topic. Uh, so you want to try to go get in front of them um, and talk about how you how you played this cool new game and they should check it out too and refer them to the game that way okay? which is of course a much faster way to go get people potentially than um, 
you know, having to set up a blog because you can go find the people, right? But just find the people that would be most interested in this specific topic. Okay. Another question. How can I make $4,000 in the next six weeks without selling to local businesses? Now, this, this person specifically said, you know, I'm just not comfortable yet talking to uh, businesses and everything else, and I understand that I could sell uh, different services, SEO services, website update services, schema, website analysis, all that stuff to businesses. I'm just not comfortable yet. I want to know, though, how I could make $4,000 by December 15th. So I just pick six weeks, whatever, six or seven weeks. And, and the simple answer is you can make it any way you want to. But more specifically, you got to go pick a niche, pick a product, and that niche to promote. Just what we started about all the way back at the beginning of this discussion about affiliate marketing. It's the same topic. Because okay? you, you've got to go pick something to sell and start promoting it. Okay? And, it and if for those of you that don't have anything specific to sell before the beginning of this webinar today, if, if we ended with you just having the concept of, I just need to go pick something and start promoting it, then that would be really awesome. Because once you start doing that, you're going to learn a lot. You're going to generate some traffic. You're going to generate some sales. Because okay. um, if anything we want you guys to do, it's it's not just learn. It's take action and do. Because once you do that, then you can um, be able to uh, get a lot of results a whole lot faster. Um, here's somebody asking, how do I set up a new blog from scratch, pick products to promote as an affiliate, optimize the site, and get incoming links? And the answer is, um, we covered some of this earlier. Uh, it's also covered in the prior training webinars. And I mentioned the, the, the specific training earlier. There's a training that's literally called Creating Mini Sites. Go find that training. That training covers this exact topic in detail and will give you that information so that you can um, be able to get all that answered for you. All right, it's Q&A time. Well, we're having Q&A time. Um, and, and I saw you guys have posted at least 4 billion questions while I was talking. Um, and, and a couple of you asked really, really long questions. And, and I've got to train you out of really, really long questions because they take over the entire question box. And they're too hard for me to read when I'm trying to read and answer stuff. So shorter questions are better, not the ones that are two sentences. A couple of you wrote. Some of them are like, Literally, they take up like five inches on my screen. Um, so you can ask questions. In the meantime, though, in the chat window at the bottom, you should see the link to the Facebook group. You should go to the Facebook group. Join if you haven't already joined. And you'll see a post on the Facebook group that says, how did you like today's training? And we'd love to get your feedback on the training. And yes, there will be a replay for all of you who are asking, came in late and asked if there's a replay. Okay. And, um, but if you go to this Facebook group, and you can see the link there as well, okay, we're going to give away $100. Actually, I'm going to give away because Brian's not here, so I'm going to weigh Brian's money today. $100 randomly to someone who posts feedback in the Facebook group about today's training. We, of course, appreciate your liking, loving, sharing, et cetera, positive feedback. But if we screwed up, you can also feel free to tell us that, um, and we'll be sad. All right, so other questions. Da -da 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 -da. All right, hang on. Let me go make this question box bigger so that I can better see all of your questions. And I know some of you got questions in at the kind of at the last minute this morning that I didn't get a chance to get all the way up on here, so we'll try to do that. Um, the Facebook link again is right there. That was such an easy question, Steve. You can ask another question. All right. Okay. All right, Mitchell is asking, can we talk about how to create a schema? Uh, you probably got here a little bit late. So at the beginning, I talked about how we're going to talk about how to create a schema. In the next couple of weeks, we're going to do, we had a lot of questions on schema. We're going to do some really in-depth training on that. In the meantime, there's the tutorial for the schema tool. And there are two trainings that talk about um, setting up schema. Uh, if I can remember them off the top of my head, one of them is uh, Q&A, new tools. And the other one is something like an awesome new SEO trend or something like that. 
uh, but their, their recent trainings within the last month or two, because we only built the software recently and added it into the Webership uh, things. Okay. Uh, Steve, the answer to that one is no. Uh, let's see. What does one do to avoid the dreaded overwhelm? Jim, write, write this down. Stop thinking so hard, followed by stop worrying. Now, I know this is really easy for me to say. But I'm going to say it anyway because the reason you guys get overwhelmed, there's so much information, everything else, is because you're, it goes back to you're trying to learn it all and then you're trying to do it all. And, and, and let me try, try to create a comparison. There's a company here in America um, that does about a billion dollars a year in direct sales. From online promotions, they sell a wide variety of products and services from newsletters to uh, supplements to cruises and information on investing. Okay. And they're really, really good. They have some of the highest paid copywriters in the, in the world working for them. Literally, the people that write their sales copy promotions make well above $100,000 a year. Okay. They make a lot of money. Okay. They have extremely complex marketing systems. Okay. You know, if you, you, you mean would like lose your mind looking at all the permutations of how someone goes through one of their marketing funnels and the follow-up and the down sales and the up sales and what they're going to sell them six months from now, okay? It's enormously complex, but it's a billion-dollar company. They have people sitting around all day long who do nothing but do complex stuff for them, okay? But we're not running billion-dollar companies. We don't need to be enormously complex. Okay. All we need is something that we can go do and repeat that gets us leads, hopefully adds some people to an email list, makes us sales. Okay. So we just got to find one thing that we can sell, something to focus on, and go do it. And even if that one process that you do doesn't make you $100,000 a year, doesn't matter, let's say, Let's say you go and you start selling, you know, Brian and a lot of things talks about massage chairs, right? So let's say you go start selling, promoting massage chairs. I'm not telling you all to go promote massage chairs. There's a million things to promote. But let's say you start promoting massage chairs. And when you start promoting massage chairs, you find out that you think, wow, you know, I really suck at this. I can only sell one every month that I make $400 a chair, okay? And so, not to be funny, you think, man, I really suck at this. I worked for like the last week and a half and I built the site and I got some traffic and all I'm making is $400 a month. So the next year I'll make $5,000 and I suck at this. Well, let's think how badly you suck. How many other things in life have you done that you felt you sucked at that you made $5,000 for? Don't have to name 10, don't have to name five, just name one thing you did where you screwed up and sucked and you made $5,000. And I know you can't. Okay? Now think about this. You went out, you started, you got some success, you made money, and oh, you went through the whole learning curve and you know how to do this now. And you built something that on autopilot is making four hundred dollars a month. But then it really doesn't suck all that much when you put it that way, does it? Because if you built one little mini site that sold massage chairs that made five thousand dollars a year. How many of you, okay, put, put a two in the chat box. If you would, like, if you made $5,000 from one site, how many of you would build another site? What do you think? You should be like, oh, next week I'm going to build another site. Yeah, in a heartbeat, right? Oh, yeah, of course, right? I mean, seriously, okay? So what if you go out and you do something to make money and you, and you only make a little bit of money? It's not like you can't go do another thing and another thing and, another, and keep building on your success, okay? And instead of trying to build 25 sites to promote 50 different products, pick one, focus, go get leads, go get traffic, set up a little mini site, okay, and, and, and build on your success. Because all of this is new to you now. And the first time you build it, it won't be as pretty as the 10th time you do it, okay, and it won't be as easy. But once you go through this learning curve, okay, then you will find even though it's short learning curve, the next time, man, it's going to go so much faster. 
because you don't know how to do this. You're like, oh, I know how to make my list of terms to do this, and I know I've got a good idea where to start with it. I'm going to go use this tool, and I already know how to use it. I don't got to go watch the tutorial again because I know how to set it up. I know how to do this because the next time will be easier and the time after that and the time after that, and you will build in your success. Okay? It's why we want you to go do stuff because if you go do stuff, start making money, this is so much more fun. And it's, you know, and, and that was a short question. I, I get in these long, long answers. Okay. Um, all right. Is WebFire fully adaptive for mobile traffic? Yes. Um, okay. Because obviously, mobile traffic is more than half the traffic online now. Mobile traffic is absolutely fine. Doesn't affect anything that we're doing other than what we've already handled. You're only issue with mobile traffic is to make sure that whatever site you're promoting or site you build is going to be able to handle mobile traffic. So that's the part that you need to worry about on your end. Um, Steve, you're trying to download a plugin. What plugin? If it's our plugin and it's and something isn't working right, send the exact info to um, support. If it's like another plugin you're trying to update, like a WordPress blog or something, you can't figure out what to do. Go to Fiverr and pay somebody five dollars to solve that problem, because um, you'll be way better off doing that along the way. Um, Doug asks, "How do I market a network marketing opportunity?" I was talking about that earlier um, in in this webinar. Uh, same concept of think about the terms that people are going to use for make money online, network marketing, MLM, your competitors, um, you know, people that hate their job, want a new job, want to make more money all those kind of things and are terms that you would use both to search for uh, in the lead tools and to uh, post up on your blog along the way. Um, so, oh, just one second. Okay, let's go here. Thank you for that. All right, Francis asks, what's better to promote her upcoming or his upcoming, I'm not sure if it's a man or a woman, um, hard copy book or simply ebook? You have no, you have fear that you have no control on the web of your ebook because you think everyone's going to steal it. Um, this is a good question. So if you have digital content, like you sell an ebook, will people steal it and give it to their friends and share it? The answer is yes, people will. You can't stop them. It's going to happen. So you either have to decide, I'm never going to sell a digital product, or I'm not going to worry about that, because I'm just going to sell it to the people that show up and buy it. Because most people that are going to show up are not going to be like, oh, I wonder if I can go find a way to steal this book. It's not how most of us think, thankfully. But it is a natural consequence of the way the internet works that people will share digital content with one another, even though it's copyrighted, even though it shouldn't be done, even though it violates all the rules, blah, blah, blah. Okay? It still is something that absolute, absolutely does happen. So if you're going to worry about it, then only sell a physical copy to people. But if you're going to sell a physical copy to people that you've got to print and ship, it obviously changes your math and it changes um, how you can promote it and how quickly people can receive it because a lot of people want the instant gratification of I can get access and download it um, directly. All right. Well, you have a lot of vowels. I'm going to say Naima, hopefully I said your name right, asked, can you can direct us to recommended affiliate links? Um, you can become an affiliate for a lot of places without a problem, like ClickBank, for example. Big marketplace, lots and lots of different info products, and now some, uh, some actual physical products that they're selling uh, that you can get approved for. Uh, pretty much anyone in the world can along the way. Uh, and do that. So you can uh, just go there as a starting point, and then they've got enough stuff. I mean, because we sell a lot of different products through ClickBank and, and our um, other business in the survival niche, you know, we generate actually not that much money because it's mixed with other stuff, but well, well above a hundred thousand dollars a year just selling ClickBank stuff. So it's massive. You can make a lot of money uh, doing that and being able to do that. Um, do you need to set up a separate business entity to do any of these things? No, you don't. You always can later on. Um, the um, Let's see here. I'm trying to 
run all the way back up through the questions. All right, so Simon says he's got a friend with a high-value physical product. You want to promote and sell it to the public, but you also want to be able to sell up an affiliate program for him to use. Um, I can't recommend a specific affiliate software program uh, that he could use um, off the top of my head, and I can't remember uh, a lot of the ones that we have. We've either, we either use third-party networks like JVZ or ClickBank, or we built our own stuff like into WebFire. Um, there is software that we use um, that I actually don't remember the name of, but if you just search affiliate programs, you can find software that you could buy for like a one-time payment and get installed for a hundred or two hundred dollars, uh, not not a huge amount of money, and then just be able to uh, have control of your you know your own affiliate program that way. Um, okay, let me keep going back through here. Um, Jacqueline asks, is it easy to outsource getting an email capture method on your site? You mean like a pop-up window or getting a, 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 an opt-in form installed? Yes, that's very easy because it's a really common thing that people that know how to do it would be able to do it instantly um, and be able to do that. Okay, just working my way back up through trying to answer some more questions. In the meantime, make sure you're posting up on that page and uh, we'll be able to do that. Okay, just reading back through. Okay, Amalia asks, what site, what type of image is most efficient for a site's technical performance? And the answer is, uh, it doesn't matter whether it's a JPEG or PNG, none, none of that matters. Just smaller images are better. So if you have really big images, like I have and sort of one of the guys that programmers that create stuff for us, when he makes images, they're like gigantic. I mean, they're like three gigabytes, okay? They should be like 30 kilobytes. I mean, whatever. I mean, he, he makes massive images. Massive images just take longer time, bigger bigger file sizes. So the smaller you can make the file size, the be the faster that they are going to um, load up. All right. Going back. Uh, Paresh asks, if you have customers on Amazon, can you get them to your list and market to them other stuff? Yeah, if they're a customer and you get their email address, you could email them and, and offer them other uh, products and services, yes. Uh, but you're only going to get that information from a, a customer then there. Okay. I think I got most of these when we were talking earlier. Okay, good. All right. So we're going to give you another minute to post up on the Facebook page. and. Um, Chris, you're being creative and post it in the wrong place. Post again on the October 26th post, please, because then I can actually pay attention here and count you in the list and get it right. Um, somebody asked, they're, they're setting up a new site, and they want to know, did they use the keyword tool to create the site name? Um, not the site name. You want to use, so you, for the domain name, there's a keyword domain tool, uh, and look for that domain tool, and you can type in your keyword, and it will search it, create a list of keywords like the keyword tool does, and then we'll go search for available domains uh, so that you can find that uh, there. Tim wants to know how you can avoid market saturation versus the competition. Tim, unless your market is really, really tiny, there's not going to be market saturation. So don't go into a tiny, tiny, tiny market. Hey, wait, Brian woke up. All right, Brian. <laughs> See, I, I told you, when you get older, you need the afternoon nap. And, and <laughs> no, I'm really, I'm just kidding. For those of you who came in late, Brian had some family stuff he had to take care of today. So he's just able to join us. Yes, yes. So um, uh, just as a side note on those two things right there, you know, if you think you're in a market where um, it might be like, you know, I, I, and I, I agree with Sean, you can't really oversaturate like a larger market. But if you think you're in a larger market and you, and you know you, you think it's really hard to get ranked for like a lot of the main terms, in that case, you can look towards like either like a sub niche or um, what I call like you know longer tail key keywords because usually in like any 
given niche out there, like let's say weight loss, okay? A term like weight loss, diet, or stuff like that, obviously it would probably be very, very competitive, um, and it wouldn't be all that easy to get ranked for a term like that. Um, but, you know, a term like weight loss tips for men, or weight loss tips for women, or weight loss tips for seniors, or some kind of keyword or sub-niche like that, uh, oftentimes might be far, far easier to break into um, and, you know, can be just as re responsive, if not more. Um, and as far as the question on the keyword tool goes, you know, um, you don't have to have a keyword in the domain itself. Um, that's just a trick that I show off can sometimes work well. If you have a keyword in a d domain as well as, you know, you use it on your site and you have it, you know, in your title tag and all that right there. But if you find a keyword that the keyword tool says, you know, is really good, has a lot of searches, isn't too hard to, to rank for, and you want to turn it into your own site, you certainly can find an available domain name that is that key keyword if it's available and uh, try to use that trick right there. Um, one other thing too, because I, I just got, got on this call and, uh, you know, I had some family stuff to attend to. Um, so I, I don't know everything that Sean said, but uh, one thing that I did see, you know, in the questions that I saw prior that I wanted to uh, specifically put, point out, because I see guys oftentimes miss this, um, is we had, you know, a handful of guys ask one of two things. One was like, you know, how, how do I get more exposure for this, this, or, or that? And a trick that oftentimes guys don't do, they don't do the guest blogging. And we have the guest blogging tool that allows you to literally you know, see all the blogs out there that appear to accept some kind of a guest blog post and then contact those guys with a click of a button. So if you were looking to get more exposure for your um, music, I think that, that was, there, was, there, there was a guy that wanted more exposure for, for, for his music, or like another person that wanted more exposure for their um, business on alternative medicine and uh, treat, treatments and stuff like that, all those right there would be kind of perfect uh, for the guest blog tool. And it's not like you have to write a unique post uh, with each guy that you write in an email. You can s send out you know, an email to all those guys and just give an example of one article or one blog post that you have so they can see the quality. And then whoever accepts it, you can either write a unique blog post for um, or you can use the article spinner tool and make uh, a bunch of quality looking articles uh, very, very quickly and easily that way as well. Um, another question that I saw, and this is the last one, and I'll, I'll t t turn it back to uh, Sean. Um, you know, another question I saw a lot of is, um, you know, how to do um, or how to sell essentially the schemas and all that right there. And really quick, what I advise you to do is if you go into the training or on the, uh, um, in the member area and you go under the training tab, under the uh, Wednesday calls, there's one that we did a few weeks ago uh, that was like five ways to $1,000. Um, I believe on that one we talked specifically about a schema, but more importantly, we actually provide you with templates and stuff uh, that you can write out and literally copy and paste and change around a few words and contact prospects out there uh, like that. And um, I, I know we're you know running short short on time here, so if that's if that's of further interest to you on a future call, I can go into a lot more detail um, on that as well. I'm not sure how how much of that was actually covered or not, but Sean, I'll pass it on to you because it looks like you're about to choose a winner. I am. I am. And, and Brian, you didn't get to see this unless you got to flip through the, the PowerPoint because this just came in this morning that, whoops, the whole page is moving by itself. It's really exciting. Um, <laughs> Jackie uh, had posted up, uh, sent a message in this morning uh, asking a question but also saying um, that she had sold a schema to a local business. Um, and, and this is hilarious. She's like, you'll perhaps be annoyed that I sold this schematic schema too cheap at 247 pounds. And no, we would never be annoyed with you because you took action and sold something, exactly. and, I, and I know you only started like a week and a half ago, so that's that's truly awesome. And anything you do, sell and make money, that is, that's just amazing. And as you said, you're going to be doing some other stuff for this company now. You got your foot in the door. You've got you you got your first sale, which is just just terrific. And if you sold, you know, somebody every week, I, I wouldn't be mad if you did that. Uh, and, and down the road, you can charge more money and raise your price and get more complicated, but it's awesome that you yeah, are that's, that's, able to do that. That's really, that's really awesome. What's cool with that, this is oftentimes I see a lot of guys have the same fear. They tend to basically undercharge because they, they fear 
the higher price. Um, you know, regardless of how, how much I say, hey, you know, you can charge more than that, but, you know, even charging the, what, like 247 pounds or what, whatever that was, I mean, that's close to, for, for those of you that aren't, you know, in the UK, that's like, you know, probably 350 bucks or something around there. Um, you know, that's an awesome start uh, because it kind of gets your foot in the door as it seems, you know, you're selling other stuff there too, uh, but it gives you the experience so the next time you go to another bit business, you have the confidence that you can sell it because you already just sold one, which is awesome. Um, so yeah, that's, again, two thumbs up there. Um, I'm glad to uh, hear that as well. And, and, and yeah, we'll, 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 we'll try to cover on a future call as, as well. I can go into a lot more detail um, on that as well. So unfortunately, I couldn't be on uh, most of this call here, but um, on one of the future calls in the, in the next while, we'll cover more uh, on that. So Sean. Um, I'll hand the winner to you, and I know you usually don't do the drawing yourself, but I usually just go to random.org, and there's a number. Yeah, and, and I know you, you like it if you can have, can have control. Even if I could spell random.org, it would be even better. Okay, so let's see how many people we got, because people just posted another. Now, I know there's a couple down the bottom. Chris said, why about one, two, three, four. Five. So we have five down below. Got ambitious and got down below. And let's just make sure we've got however many more there are here. Um, whoops. Right up here. Okay, the pin post. All right, so we got 68 there, five more. That's 73, right? I'm good at that math. Okay, one through 73. Whoops. Hang on. And got to turn my... Number lock on and 73 will type in much better now. We're going to generate, and the answer is 44. I don't like that answer because now I've got to like count really, really far down the page. Um, all right, so let's pop the questions open, the comments open. Hang on. Now did my internet just glitch? Somebody won $100. You were just not actually going to be able to give it to them right now. Brian, you want to open the page? Um, I can make you the presenter real quick so we can count down and end in, in, in the suspense. Brian? Um, yeah, let, let, let me see if it loads here for me. And it does seem to load for, for me. So I can tell you right now, Sean, if you give me a minute, I'll count down, it was for 44, right? 44, yes. It's easier to count if everybody's not watching. <laughs> I, I, know I know somebody else has probably already counted down the whole page just to make sure if they won or not, so. 11, 12, 13. Uh, somebody asked, how can, much can you charge for a schema? You could charge at least $500, and for any larger business, $1,000 or more, particularly if you're going to do it for multiple pages. Um, because a lot of sites, uh, companies have um, multi-page websites where uh, different pages would you'd want to have different schema on. All right, so I have the winner. It is Clive Stephen Wheatstone. Clive, you're a winner. Po post us up a, a message or post your uh, email address in here, and we will send you a hundred dollars. And thank you all for uh, being here and playing along and joining us uh, today. Um, let's see. I'll just see if there's any other questions real quick. Um, that we can answer. Um, Tariq, SMS marketing, same idea as blog marketing. Yeah, you can use you know the same concept to be able to do that. All right. A lot of people are typing in great training. Thank you. Appreciate it. I know Brian was awesome today. All right, there's Clive's email address, Sharon. If you want to grab that, we will shoot you cash money. Uh, and Jackie, once again, congratulations on uh, making your first sale, getting your first customer, uh, making things happen. And no, I'm not disappointed at all that you went out, made a sale, and already started a conversation with the business. and. Jackie, I mean, for those of you who didn't say in her post, you can go read it right on the Facebook page. Only started, um, let's see, she couldn't have started before, what, 
a week ago Sunday. So 10 days ago, she joined Webfire. Um, and it might have been slightly even less than that. So she literally brand new, following the training that you have access to and taking action. Way to go. Brian, any last thing you want to uh, add in? Um, so I think, you know, we're, we're pretty good here. And, you know, again, as always, guys, if there's ever, like, a topic or something that you want to see training and stuff on, um, do one of two things first. First, check the existing trainings that we have because there's a ton of them. And luckily, uh, we title each one so you can get a rough idea of what each, each one's on. Um, but secondly, um, if there's, like, a newer topic, or something you, that you'd want to be clarified more, or anything like that, let us know. Just write, write our su support, um, or let us know on these calls here, and we'll try to make sure that we always cover, you know, on like a future call or anything like that. You know, anything that you guys want more training on, as as long as it you know makes sense and all that, um, right there. So keep that in mind, again, guys. And we're excited to hear, you know, what you know, you guys are doing. That's really exciting to, to hear about, uh, you know, so, someone basically taking really fat, fast action there and selling a schema, so that's always good right there. Um, and yeah, that's about all I can think of right here. And of course, if there's any questions or anything like that missed, uh, let us know and we can make sure to uh, cover those on a future call then. So with that, guys, thanks much, and we'll see you next week then.